Hey everybody, this is Jason Robinson, Illustration by Design. Hope you guys are doing well. It has been a while since I have uh, done a drawing live stream, especially a portrait stream. Uh, I've been, uh, it's been about a year since I've drawn a portrait, so I'm really out of practice with that. And um, it's been, I don't know, several weeks, over a month since I've done a drawing stream. So I'm trying to get back into it a little. Um, I have been a little busy um, over the past month or so. Uh, I went on vacation the end of uh, June, beginning of July uh, for my 10th anniversary. That was fun. Went to uh, Branson, Missouri. If you guys are familiar with it, if you're not, you should go check it out. It's very cool, sort of a cross between Orlando, Florida, and Las Vegas, and the country. <laughs> um, it's got lots of live acts, amusement parks, and lots of nature, natural things to look at. Very cool. Lots of natural caves and waterfalls and stuff. So I, I definitely encourage everybody to, to go visit if you have a chance. People are really nice there. And I, I, we were there for a week. I wish we had more time to hang out because we only had time to do maybe 15% of everything we wanted to do in the area. It was just jam packed with events, attractions, and other things. And every day we were just like jumping from one thing to another, trying to get as much in as possible. And it was just, just was not enough time, but it was fun, a lot of fun, and uh, we're definitely gonna, we'll definitely try to make our way back to to, uh, to Branson at some point in the future. I don't know, maybe maybe in a few years or so. And then after uh, after I got back from vacation, my computer died on me, so it was out for a whole week, and uh, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. I thought it was one thing, tried fixing that, it wasn't that, and then. Uh, Finally, I ended up having to call a computer repair company, which I rarely do. But um, the guy came and he looked at it and he, he figured out that it was the actual power supply inside the computer. Now, there's two power supplies in, in the Mac. There's like a little little coin battery. I thought it was that at first, so I replaced that. But that didn't fix the problem. The problem was that it wouldn't, the computer wouldn't turn on. Nothing would happen when I pressed the on button. So it turns out it was actually the, the big, like, monster um, uh, power supply um, inside the computer. And so I, I went on eBay and bought a replacement, and then that took a week to get here. And then plugged that in a couple of days ago, and yes, it worked. And my computer is now up and running, and everything's hunky-dory, but my computer is 13 years old, so I am now actively looking for <laughs> a new computer, a replacement, and uh, if nothing else, um, a way to uh, to back up my, my information, my data on my computer, because I was afraid that the whole computer had died and I would have lost everything, so... I, uh, I had a, I had a backup hard drive previously, but that died about a year ago. I never took the time to replace it, so yesterday I ordered a new backup drive. So, and then I have to plan on looking for cloud storage, and uh, so it'll be backed up online somewhere, so that if my place burns down, I'll still have all my files and everything. So I, I got a whole bunch of stuff I got to do. So got to be a responsible computer owner and uh, do all this sort of stuff. But anyway, with that said, welcome to my live stream. I'm Jason Robinson. I'm an artist and an illustrator. And today I'll be drawing actor Jim Caviezel for you good folk. And uh, in case you don't know who Jim Caviezel is, first became famous, at least to me, when he did, uh, he played Jesus Christ and Passion of the Christ. Ooh, 20 years ago? I think it was 2003, 2004. And um, then he was in a, in a cop series called uh, 
person of interest on CBS. I never watched that. My mom liked it though. She loved that show. Um, and then uh, I guess most recently he is currently starring in uh, The Sound of Freedom, a very uh, popular but controversial um, in, independent movie about uh, child trafficking. And uh, it's doing really well in the box office. I saw it about a week and a half ago, I think. And I thought it was a really, really good movie. Great movie. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. It is definitely a film that everybody should watch. But it, 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 the good, two good things. One is PG-13, so it's not that graphic, although you definitely get, you definitely understand what's going on and what is being dealt with. Um, it's not it's not explicit, but it gives you the information you need. Um, and uh two it's just it's just a really well acted movie so i encourage everybody to go check it out but uh yeah with that said i'm gonna try to get some music going and uh get my computer set up going so i have some reference in order to draw him uh i, I found a picture of him but I just have to uh, get all that stuff set up. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. I don't have, well, it's over there, my cell phone, so I can check the chat, see how you guys are doing, and then uh, I will be back in a second. I am really, I thought I was organized today, but it turns out that I'm not, Dagnabbit. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, I, I, I'll be able to get more combobulated as opposed to discombobulated over the next few hours as I draw this. So thanks for your patience. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Oh, sorry about that. I had to. Hey, Grant, how you doing? Good to see you, Grant Crosby. Sorry about that. I had to find a reference for Jim Caviezel. I already had one figured out, but I need to put it on my tablet. So this took me a few minutes. I apologize to everybody for taking so long to get organized. Should have done it ahead of time. And of course, I didn't, but. Oh, well, now I'm ready, and I'll start a drawing for you. So, whoops, uh, raise my seat so I can actually reach the paper. That'd be nice. Uh, let me, let me see who's here. Let me see who is showing up today. Margo's here. How you doing, Margo? Hopefully, Margo. Well, she she said that she is uh she might be going to dinner. So, sorry for making you wait. Intense Weds is here. How you doing? Good seeing you. Gable Penny shots here. Hitting on Margo. Of course, Jay Ryan is here. Jay Ryan is everywhere. And uh, let's see. Oh, Alpha Proto. How you doing, Alpha Proto? It says God's children are not for sale. No, they are not. Joseph Dreads here. How you doing, Joseph? Iowatha. Good seeing you. And who else is here? Chris Longfellow is here. How you doing, Chris? Great seeing you as well. Crypto Comics is here. Good to see you as well. And uh, I think that's it. I think it's everybody. Yes, I think everybody. I think I've hit everybody. Looks like it. Yeah, I did. I did. Joseph Dredd says he played... Edmond Dante's and the Count of Monte Cristo too. Which version? Um, it's been the last version I saw of Count of Monte Cristo was the one with uh, Henry Cavill in it. Is that the one that he was in? It's been a. I mean, that was that was a while ago. I mean, that was a long time ago. That was like in the nineties. I'm trying to remember. I think. Um, Margaret says, "Passion of the Christ." Very moving movie. Yes. Um, both the Passion of the Christ and this movie he's currently in, uh, Sound of Freedom, they're movies that they're great movies, but they're movies that I that I don't find entertaining. Um, or I, I mm, yeah, I, I don't find them entertaining movies. They're great movies. They're worth watching, but they're not movies I would want to see more than once. I I, I saw Passion of the Christ once. When it first came out, 
And even though I loved it, I have no desire to <laughs> to watch it again. It's it's too it's too intense. It's too especially the um you know the, the whole the crucifixion march that whole this is too much it's not something that 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 i that i enjoy watching and it's the same with this movie i mean there's no there's nothing that graphic in it but just the subject matter is so it's so intense that i, I don't get enjoyment from from watching the movie it's a great movie but once for me was enough to, to see it to, to understand to, to absorb it to understand what was going on I don't I don't need to see the movie again so <laughs> um there's there's some movies like that for me I, I mean I mean that I love the movies movies that I love but I, I just can't watch them more than once because they're, they're, they're too much for me so um Mario says I put dinner on won't be long okay Okay, the one with Henry Cavill. Okay, yeah, yeah, I saw that one. It's, I mean, I haven't seen that in well over a decade. Mario says, I haven't seen the Henry Cavill one. I remember an older one. I will look for the Henry one. Yeah, Henry's a kid in that one. He, I mean, not a kid, but he's he's a teenager. He plays the son of, uh, of I think, the bad guy. So, but, anywho, with that said, let me let me start sketching and uh, and drawing. Jim Caviezel for you guys. Hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully you're staying cool. It's very hot out there. It is summer, of course, but it's just ugh, it's hot. I live in I live in Florida, and uh, I don't like the heat to begin with. So this weather definitely makes me stay indoors more 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 often than not. It was hot. It was hot up in. Up in Branson, Missouri, when we went to a visit um, a, f yeah, a few weeks ago, but um, it wasn't it wasn't nearly as hot as Florida. It's just because we they didn't have the humidity that Florida does, and and plus, you know, we went uh, we went in various caves uh, in Missouri um, on walking tours, and temperature in, in the caves um, drops down to like sixty degrees. So it made it. Made it very pleasant after being out in the heat. So, Margaret says, "Summer in Scotland is a wee bit damp." Hmm. Yeah, it's always. I think it's always damp in Scotland, isn't it? I went to Scotland in in uh, in May, and it was it was just wet and cold. <laughs> Jeff Prosser th says, I think your camera is frozen. Okay, I will check. It might very well be. Let's see. It's working now. Let's see. Settings all got messed up. Let's see. There we go. That's better. For some reason that everything got reset. For some strange reason. All right, you got that. I got that. I think that's okay. That should be good. Okie doke. Cool. J. Ryan says, Jason's streams are a glorious nightmare of technical difficulties. Yes, they are. So if you're expecting perfection, streaming perfection from my streams, I'm afraid you're going to be sorely disappointed. 
that will never happen. And uh, I can promise you that there will be plenty of mistakes whenever I live stream. So you'll be sure to get your money's worth. All right, let's see. Um, Margo says your computer must have done it. I can't read it. Your computer must have done it. Rebooting. Now, is it? No, my computer didn't reboot. It's, it might be my uh, my internet connection. It might have uh, spurged out for a second and then come back on. And then it just, uh, you know, messed everything up. I'd be more up, upset if the stream ran perfectly. I'd be very surprised if, if any of my streams ran perfectly. Um, okay, let's see. I think I got everything settled. Now, let me wait. Yes, I do have the right glasses on. That's important because I need to see. So, uh, all right. Let's see here. Try lowering my chair a little. That's good. All right, that's better. Ah, that's good. Move the camera, oh, not the camera, but the light over a little. That's good. All right. Now, again, I haven't drawn a portrait in a, about a year, so. <laughs> Disclaimer. So have you guys seen this movie? Have you guys seen uh, Sound of Freedom yet? If so, what would you think? Let me know. I know at the showing I went to, again, this is about a week and a half ago, at the end, the audience applauded at the end of the movie. And, and the theater was packed. Actually, it's been packed pretty much every every showing in my area um, in South Florida. So it's doing well. Um, but, you know, I don't know, I don't know how it is in the rest of the country. Is it even, is it showing outside of the United States? I have no idea. I haven't been following it that closely, but I, I think it's made over a hundred million dollars here in the U.S. And, and the movie only costs like 14 million, 14 and a half million to make. So it's doing it's doing really well. There's a, I think it's a surprise hit to to uh, to uh, Hollywood. So I know it was made five years ago, and then it was shelved by Disney. <laughs> Disney did not want people to watch to see this movie, so they shelved it, and uh, and then finally I think they they uh, they they were able to get the rights back from Disney somehow and uh and they just uh they found another i guess another production company another di distribution company to uh to release it i think it's angel studios so that's good i'm glad they managed to do that because it's a good film um Jeff Fox says, I forgot my coating glasses at home. I hate when I do that. Yeah. Uh, just, just says, I haven't seen Sound of Freedom yet. Yeah, well, I'm sure if you don't have a chance to see it in the theaters, it'll be streamed somewhere soon enough. So.
Have you guys seen Mission Impossible yet? I'm going to try to see that this weekend if I can. That has been my, uh, the one film I've been looking forward to all year. So hopefully it will be good. Well, I know it'll be good. I just, hopefully it'll, it'll be as exciting as I'm, as I'm hoping it will be. I should probably say that. Jay Ryan says, it was great. I saw it on Wednesday. Um, Joseph Dress says, I'm looking forward to the Napoleon film. Napoleon film. Who does that star? I, I remember hearing or seeing something about that, but I mean, I'm not, I don't know if I'm that interested in seeing a film about Napoleon. I mean, I pro that's something I probably watch at home. I don't know if I go to theaters for that, but um Who's, who's, who's playing Napoleon in that movie? But yeah, I, I love the uh, Mission Impossible movies. I mean, there's very, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, part of it is, is just straight up Tom Cruise's commitment to them and his willingness to, uh, to do these crazy stunts. So I think that just sort of elevates how cool they are to watch, um, but uh, yeah, in and of itself, I mean, I I, I love I love the, the just the whole dynamic of Mission Impossible, you know, team working together trying to accomplish impossible things, and uh, you know, so sort of the mayhem that that occurs as they're doing it. So, and I love yeah, I love all the actors in it. Um, yeah, everyone from what's her name? <laughs> I always think of uh, the characters' names like uh, Agent Carter. It's uh, Atwell, something Atwell. She, what's her first name? Can't remember. But uh, that actress, like Tom Cruise, I like uh, yeah, most of those guys. Bing Rames, you know, a lot of great, good actors in these movies. So. Should be a fun time. Haley Atwell. Thank you very much. Haley Atwell. Joseph Dredd. Hey, Hen's here. How you doing, Hen? Good seeing you. 
Um, Jeff Potts says, Laponia is a Ridley Scott movie. Oh, boy. That means I'll probably fall asleep watching it. Um, <laughs> what, what was the last Ridley Scott movie I saw was that uh, Aliens prequel. Um, I can't remember the name of it. With uh, uh, Charlize Theron and uh, what's-his-face, Idris Elba. I think he was in it playing the captain. That movie was... <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was so ridiculous. It was killing me. Oh my gosh. I wasn't a fan of it. Um Yeah, I'll, pro I'll probably watch uh Napoleon when it's on TV sometime. Oh, Prometheus. Thank you very much. I completely forgot the name of it. Prometheus. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that it, it, it looked bad. I mean, it looked great. It was just a story and the behavior of the characters were so ridiculous to my mind. I mean, just, just in that, you know, the, the one scene where the people first find the, uh, you know, the aliens on a planet and yeah, that one idiot, he sees what what is clearly a creature he should not mess with, and he starts like doing baby talk to it. It's like, oh, what are you? It's like this weird snake thing. It's like, what are you doing, idiot? It's back away from it. And he doesn't. And of course, he's the first to die. And of course, I cheered because I hate stupid people in sci-fi movies. It's just like, someone please kill this character. And they did. But and then after that, you just had ridiculous sort of dopey mayhem. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just did not did not thrill me watching that movie. Um, Jeff, uh, sorry, Joseph Dress says, don't watch that Alien Covenant movie either. I didn't. <laughs> Jeff Bond says, it's sad to see the director push the very franchise they started. Did did he do the first Alien movie? Yeah, he did. That was Ridley Scott. And then after uh, Aliens was done by uh, James Cameron. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty sad. Yeah. Grant Crosby says, I think the smart ones would kind of remain silent until the current madness ends. Current, current madness passes. What do you mean? I'm not sure I understand, Grant. I, I think the smart ones would kind of remain silent until, until the current madness passes. What what current madness? I think I missed something. I may have missed a comment that Grant Crosby is referring to. I got to mark the time. It is uh, 12.35. I just, I just have to do it just so I can sort of keep myself on track. Otherwise, I will let the time slip away. Oh, I have gotten uh, some comic books in the in the mail the last few days. I got um, uh, what was it called? It's called American uh, Truth, Just Truth, Justice, and the American Way by uh, Gabe El Taib. I got that in the mail, and then I also got Narwhals 
um, sort of a murder mystery book called Cer Cerberus. It's like uh, it's a murder mystery, but it stars animals. But the the person who was murdered is the owner of one of the one of the animals, and then the animals try to solve it. Um, and I will be posting unboxings and reviews of those books probably this weekend either this weekend or monday so if you haven't already please make sure to, to subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit the like button on this video and hit the bell for notifications of future videos which will be forthcoming so uh so you can check out the review and uh, let me know your thoughts if you got those comic books as well. I will I will say that both comic books are are good, but I have uh, I I have uh, thoughts on <laughs> thoughts on each of them. They're not equally good. I will say that one is much better than the other so to find out you gotta watch the uh gotta watch the uh the video and subscribe um when the protagonist gave herself a c-section to get that alien body baby out of her and prometheus terrible yeah it was so it was just <laughs> <laughs> there was so much in that movie that was just ridiculously over the top. I, it was, it was, uh, it was just, I was laughing and uh, sort of cringing at the same time. It was, it, it was, it was bad. I didn't, mm, ah. and it didn't have to be. It could have been, a, it could have been at least a, a, a decent movie, but it was, uh, it was, it was, it was bad. Okay, Grant's, Grant's referring to the bad writing we've been seeing. Oh, in movies? Well, I don't know if we're going to see a... I don't know if we're going to see an end to the bad writing in movies anytime soon. <laughs> There's always going to be bad writing in movies. You know? I try, I try to glean from the trailers which movies are going to be not worth my time and then i just avoid spending money on those movies and generally wait till they're out on uh on streaming like you know a few weeks after they <laughs> premiere in theaters so i can i can wait several weeks to watch to watch a bad movie i don't i, I don't have to waste my gas my time and my money to see the theaters so so there are very few movies that that i go to theaters to see anymore i'm trying to think of this year the only movies that that i i've gone to the movies to see this year in 2023 have been sound of freedom which i saw a little while ago um what else have i seen this year nothing really pops into my mind um and i used to go to the movies like almost every week um, like before 2020, I was going to movies all the time. I didn't care how bad they were. Um, but, um, the only movies I'm really interested in seeing this year are Mission Impossible and the, uh, the second half of Dune. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. Hmm. So, and I, I'm kind of, I wish that weren't true. I mean, I wish there were more good movies out being made, but there just aren't. I think with, uh, with streaming being so prevalent nowadays, people feel a lot less desire or need to go to the theaters you know they can just watch great movies in their own house they don't have to 
Now, they don't have to go out of the way to, to be entertained that way for, you know, two, two and a half, three hours. So, yeah. And I don't know. To my to my mind, that's kind of a shame. I I, I like I like the sort of the uh, the tradition of going to theaters. And uh, yeah, wish I had more of an excuse to do it. Let's see. Um, Oh, let's see. Directors destroying their franchises. It's Grant. Grant's gone full Vic. Oh, <laughs> just address this. Such a tease, Jiminy. Yes, I have to have. I have to try to convince people to to subscribe and uh, to my channel and come back for more boomer streams. So that's the only way I can do it. Outside of handing out free cash. There are very few ways I can I can compel people to keep coming back to my streams other than to tease them and uh, sort of manipulate them into subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications for future videos. Now, oh, speaking of which, hold on. Of course, forgot. I always forget. Hold on. There we go. So I don't have to keep on repeating it. That's what's known as subliminal messaging. Subliminal messaging. So very subtle. Oh my gosh, Grant says uh, I really go to the movies. Last one was Battle Angel Alita. What the frick? Battle Angel Alita came out. Oh my gosh, it didn't come out in 2018. That was like five years ago. Came out before Endgame came out. I got out of it because I was a smoker most of my life. Don't well, I'll, mm, I guess I guess they stopped allowing smoking in theaters years ago, I suppose. But I mean, you couldn't stop smoking for two hours to watch a movie. Cross me said, I figured I could watch stuff at home and do whatever I wanted. I can even make an interme intermission to go cook something. <laughs> oh, that's true. That is true. All right, let's see. Now, Kavisa has a very distinctive nose, but unfortunately, there aren't enough shadows in this photo to really give it the uh, the presence it deserves. <laughs> Gonna have to try to figure that out.
Jeff Boss says I got a meeting in 15 minutes. Okay, Jeff. Thank you for spending time with us. I appreciate it. appreciate your support. Guys, if you haven't already, you should go check out Jeff Potts' novels. They're available on Amazon. Hopefully, Jeff will post links to them so you guys can look at them or buy the audiobooks and listen to them. They are fantasy novels. So, uh, Jeff Potts is a very good writer. So, I recommend everybody check out his books. Jay Ryan says, novels, you say? Yes, novels. Grant says, I've read them both. They are worth reading. Yes. There you go. There's one of them, the Wizard's Stone. Thank you very much, Jeff Potts. Post the other one as well. They carve their own sides, and hearts of gold for no man There lay they long, and your song was sung on the earth by man or elves. For each of king and elders law, there were many a teeming golden hall. They shake the north, and light they call, to hide in gems on their soul. On silver necklaces they strung. The flowering stars on crowns they hung, the dragon flies in one, the mix the light and sun. The pines were roaring on the height, the winds were moaning in the night, the 
fireless ray, the flames spread, the fiends like torches bathed with light. The bells were ringing in the day. The men looked up, the faces pale. The dragon's eye, more fierce than fire, laid low their towers and houses frail. The mountains smoked beneath the moon. The dwarves, they heard the tramp of doom. They fled their hall, the dying fall, beneath this feet, beneath the moon. He was the wind at break of day. To win our hearts and go from here. Before I go to the point that I'd like, you have a recent email. In my case, that you know, I asked you to do that might be of interest already for people to join along with the article. See, Jeff Potts says he's working on book three, a follow-up to The Revenant and the Tomb. Very cool. Very, very cool. If you have a chance, you guys should also subscribe to Jeff Potts on YouTube. I believe he's under the name uh, Hunter. I don't know. What, what is your YouTube channel? Jeff Potts? Post that as well so people can check you out. Follow your antics. Follow your misadventures. Hey, Jeff Potts, you take care. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. And thanks for posting your uh, your info for everybody to, to check out. Do some plastic surgery on this guy. Made his head too big, too fat. I do some lipo on his head. A little bit of liposuction on Jim Caviezel's head here. 
slim them down a mite. This is when I kind of wish I were doing this digitally because now I can just lasso it and then just bring it over instead of erasing whole sections of his head and redrawing them. But it's all part of the fun of drawing by hand. about one o'clock so it's going pretty well I'm about on pace Ryan says I did a time lapse ink wash on my <clears throat> on my channel the other day. It was a lot of fun getting back into doing traditional art. Yeah, I um I, I much prefer traditional art as opposed to digital art. Um so I try to do it whenever I have to <laughs> do anything. And then I'll and then I'll scan it in and do uh, probably colors in uh on the computer. It's just, uh, but I mean, I, I, I completely recognize the, the appeal 
and and a lot of times the need to do digital art i just don't get nearly as much enjoyment out of doing it as i do tr uh, traditional traditional is just i don't know i i gain a lot more from it i learn a lot more from it because it's, it is it isn't easy to fix mistakes and you have to be more careful and more mindful while you're working so for me as an artist it's much more beneficial i find than uh generally <clears throat> than digital work but at the same time i i want to learn how to do more digital stuff because i i know how important it is to sort of keep up to date keep up to speed on how to do things on the computer so double-edged sword you know i just have to try to manage my time appropriately so i'm able to do both Right now, I'm trying to keep this guy from looking like Eric Roberts. <laughs> hmm. Hey, Eric Hawkins, how you doing? Good seeing you. I'm looking forward to getting my next issue of Zombie for World of Oz any day now. Eric Hawkins says, I saw Sound of Freedom and thought it was good. I cried a lot. Yeah, um, I try not to cry during movies because I want people... <laughs> I want to see people watching me being vulnerable i wanted to cry but i didn't i sucked it up <laughs> but it was it was a great movie I, I i saw it about a week and a half ago very very good film Book should arrive sometime next week. Cool. Yay. I always look forward to Eric Hawkins' books. If you guys have, have not bought any, any of Eric Hawkins' uh, Zombie Full World of Oz books, you should. Hopefully, Eric will post links to where you can follow his, uh, his books and uh, sign up for mailing lists and stuff like that hopefully hopefully he'll do that And thanks for your suggestions. Issue two of Zombie Full Adventures will be 40 pages. Yes. Awesome. 
and feature Neverland. Yes, excellent. Cool. Can't wait to read it. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. There are eight people still watching me working on this drawing. And that is, for me, unusual and gratifying. <laughs> usually, usually only about two or three people stick around past the first 15 minutes. So I appreciate everybody. Maybe it's because I, it's been so long since I've drawn. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Eric says, I'm going to be mad if you come to Missouri again and don't tell me. Yeah, I wish I'd known you lived in, uh, in Missouri. I, I don't know how close you were to Branson, but um, 
No, I would have loved to have uh, come and visited you and then bugged you for a whole day. That would have been awesome. I could have written off the whole trip as a uh, as a business deduction. Dag nabbit. <laughs> that would have been perfect. Next time. Next time, Eric. Move the lamp a little so I can see better. Eric says, I live in Illinois, but right across from St. Louis. Heck, I would have dragged the wife to Branson to hang out with you. <laughs> Maybe you could have met halfway. That's, uh, I don't know how far that is. We, we were, you know, Branson's on the south end of Missouri, so it's, uh, it's just north of Arkansas. I don't know how long it would have taken to get to Illinois.
you some rips and get dead to us. And that's what else are we supposed to do? Take a tour of Texas. Give me a chance. See, you're all mixed up. Because the guy's the dance. Well, tell me some more. I'm about to get you. Well, for down at home, we'll have dancing school. Like your hands. Sing out loud. Eric Hawkins says, uh, Illinois is a few hours away. I just drove to a con in southern Missouri last week. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's, I, I always imagine all states are like Florida, where it takes like seven hours to get out of the state, seven or eight hours, because Florida is a very long state. So for me to get from here to, say, Georgia would take seven to eight, eight hours. I guess most states aren't that like that, except maybe... California, Texas, and Alaska. <laughs> most, most states are a lot more, a lot more compact than that.
isn't something about this is not not quite getting there. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure what it is. Something. I keep thinking his lips are too full, but I don't think they are. I'm looking at the reference, and it's like, no, I think I got those right, but something around the mouth area that's flummoxing me, vexing me. Mm. I gotta keep on working with this. This is uh, hmm. maybe it's the shadows. I need to. Maybe that's what's giving me issues. I live in Missouri, says Eric, and work in. I live in Illinois and work in Missouri. Takes me 15 minutes across to Missouri. Okay, cool. Very cool. That's very close. Margo says this is looking fantastic, Jiminy. Thank you. Glad you like it, Margo. I always, uh, I'm always uh, questioning whether what I'm seeing is accurate or if it's just my perspective because I'm the one drawing it. <laughs> Actually, I should probably stand up now and just take a look at it from a distance because I do tend to... Uh, yeah, I see some issues. But that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. 
we will we will deal with it it's not the mona lisa although it could be in 500 years this could be the new mona lisa so i should i should be more diligent about making it perfect mm. Um, J. Ryan says he has a pretty mouth, Jason. Ah, I think that's that's a that's a reference to a certain movie. Um, Margo says maybe once the facial hair is drawn, I think he looks good. Yeah, I think I think you know, once I get some of the stubble in here, it'll look more convincingly, more like Mr. Caviezel. Hen says, looks good to me. Well, thank you, Hen. I appreciate that. Eric Hawkins concurs. He says, it's looking good. And Hen says, she has to go. Sort Need to sort dinner and pop into the shop before Fanta Trivia. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Thank you, Hen. I keep forgetting that. What time is it? It's, it's 1.30 here. So that means it's 6.30 over in jolly old England where Hen and Margo and some of the other people are from. So, although Margo's from Scotland, so I apologize. <laughs> same time zone, though. Same, same time zone. We need some more plastic surgery on you, buddy. Sorry. Standing up definitely gives you a different perspective, so I have to, I have to act accordingly. Hey, Ice Queen's here. How you doing, Caroline? Good seeing you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying out of trouble. See, J. Ryan knows everyone. He knows Ice Queen. He knows Hen. He's everywhere. Now, the thing that's frustrating me right now about this drawing is that he looks... He looks a little too much like... Well, maybe he does. I don't know. He looks a little, to me... My drawing of him looks a little too much like Oliver North. If you guys know who Oliver North is, then <laughs> you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, it's, uh, it's a little 
It's annoying me a little. What? Cable Penny Shot and Ice Queen aren't getting along? What's going on? Everybody should be friends. There should be no internet beefs because it's just the internet. I don't take internet stuff seriously. Not that seriously. Let's see. Okay, well, Penny Shot says, Jason, please protect me from Ice Queen. I'm the victim here. <laughs> You're always the victim. Fortunately, we have Eric Hawkins here to act as bouncer in case Ice Queen or Gable get out of hand and start throwing bottles or something. <laughs> oh my gosh, he was your best friend. They cheated on you with Car Carol Colors. Now they're besties. Oh my goodness. Can't believe that. Oh, man. Oh, Gable. No.
Oh, let's see, um, Ice Queen says, that looks great, Jason. I was only thinking about the time you did Queen Elizabeth yesterday. Um, oh, yeah, where is that one? I think it's right. I think it's right here. Oh, there she is. Miss Queen Lizzie. That was done. Wow, that was done in uh, last September. That was a while ago. So it's been a while since I've drawn in this art book. <laughs> Sad but true. Sad but true. Jay Ryan says, I knew Jason was old, but to think he did Queen Elizabeth, incredible. Well, she was, uh, you know, not often you get to get a chance to do the Queen, so Queen of England. See, Jerry says he'd hit that confirmed. Ah, uh, yeah, well, up to a certain age. <laughs> up to a certain age. I, I, I do, I do have a an admiration for Queen Elizabeth. Though. She was, she had a very extremely tough job, and she she did it for a very long time. So. It's weird how all, all the female monarchs like sort of stand out for England and uh, the male ones, not so much. <laughs> I mean, when I, think of, when I think of monarchs of England, I think of Henry VIII, and he stands out because he murdered so many people, um, his wives, um, you know, his daughter, Queen Elizabeth the I, then Queen Victoria, and then Queen Elizabeth II, and then all the other monarchs just sort of drift away into the ether, you know, so, <laughs> I mean, they're either extremely weak, like, uh, Queen Elizabeth's uncle, can't even remember his name, was that Edward? I, I, I can't remember, or they were just sort of, they weren't that noteworthy to me, so, but the the queens stand out. For, you know, they're very. They tended to be very, very strong, very impactful monarchs. So, <laughs> Ice Queen says, "What can I say about British women?" <laughs> Jay Rice says, "Damn, simple for the monarchy. The British monarchy is pretty cool. I mean, I can't. I, I don't know. This is it's a." It's pretty cool. <laughs> I've done a lot of horrible things in history, but they're pretty cool in many ways. So <laughs> maybe, maybe I grew up watching too much BBC. All that Doctor Who has uh, has made put made an impact on me. 
when I say Doctor Who, I mean good Doctor Who. I mean Doctor Who prior to 2015. <laughs> None of this crappy Doctor Who that we've gotten, you know, over the past like several years. Ice Queen says we're a rare breed. Oh, yes, Tom Baker. Oh, oh, Tom Baker. The best doctor. The doctor which all of the doctors are measured against. No, David David uh, Tennant is awesome, too. also, too. He's probably my second favorite doctor. Here, okay, here, my favorite doctors in order... Actually, they won't be in order, but in my order will be Tom Baker, David Tennant. I will say Matt Smith. I really liked him, although I, there's some things I didn't like about him. Um, uh, what's his name? John Pertwee. It's probably fourth. Then... Um, uh, I, I, I'm not forgetting their names, which is terrible. Uh, David, uh, who, who was the, se the second doctor? The second doctor was was the David too, wasn't he? He was David. Um, oh, oh, Gail Penny shot. Shut up. He said, <laughs> "Dirty Wicker was it's the worst." Um, who was the second? Who was the second doctor? I would say he was fifth, and then after him, I would say. Peter Davison, then the first doctor, who I can't remember his name now, which is terrible. And then, and, and I feel bad because I want to shove in um, the um, that that one Scottish guy who was a doctor for like a New York minute for the TV movie, because I thought he was really good in one of the Doctor Who shorts that they made oh, maybe a decade ago but he was so good in it and made me wish that he 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 had done more things as doctor who um uh ice cream says i actually like chris eccleston or whatever yeah his name is, yeah christopher eccleston uh, uh, he was okay I, he didn't he didn't he didn't stand out to me as a great doctor um he was fine for bringing back the franchise back in what was it 2005 but he never he never really made a really strong mark in my mind or other than saying fantastic every five seconds um <laughs> he, 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 he was only on for one season so it, it was like he was i think it, given time he could have found his footing more but he just uh kind of I don't know. He just didn't do it for me. I did. I did like. Um, oh my gosh, the the one before Jody Whittaker, Peter um, Capaldi, was that his name? Peter Capaldi. I did like him as a doctor. I thought he, I thought he was very good. I I, I enjoyed his his weirdness. He, he was ver he, he he was a nice transition from Matt Smith and um david tennant those three i i i that i really liked that sort of uh that sort of range of doctors um in the same in the same way that i liked uh the the uh david trotton and oh sorry patrick trotton I, I keep saying David. David's his son. Patrick Trotton. I like the Patrick Trotton. Um, uh, J John Pertwee, Tom Baker era. I also like the David Tennant, Matt Smith, David Capaldi. Or Peter Capaldi era. Peter oh My gosh. I, I'm getting all these names mixed up. Anyway. Um, yeah. So all, all those guys I thought were great.
I didn't think Tennant fit the part, says Grant Crosby. He always seemed to be, seemed to me like a whimsical pediatrician, like Patch Adams. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, that's true. But um, Doctor Who is, is sort of whimsical isn't he? I mean, he, you, you're never really supposed to be able to, to a certain extent, predict what he's going to do. He's always supposed to be sort of a wild card, like a, you know, kind of crazy. So I, I thought that he fit in well with that. Uh, with that personality. And, and what I also liked about him was, was he was able to more more than anyone else since Tom Baker, he was able to do those really sudden shifts from extremely affable and sort of goofy to almost menacing within like a you know snap of the fingers. One second he'll be laughing and like doing something goofy. Next second he'd be like he get really intense and be threatening to destroy your entire species. And be serious about it. It would, and I, and I like that. I, that's sort of what I. And I might just because I, I grew up with Tom Baker. Um, that's what I kind of like when I see the Doctor. I want to see that that schizophrenic. This guy is insane. You know, this guy. This guy is like a. He he he's like a benevolent madman. So. Hey, Amy Lester's here. How you doing, Amy? Good seeing you. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Melissa's here. Melissa Lester is also here. How come Melissa Lester is not a moderator, but Amy is? That doesn't seem fair to me. Hmm. Hmm. How can I make Melissa a moderator? I don't know if I can. I can put her in timeout, but that's not nice. Um... Hmm, I will have to find a way to even the uh, even the odds among the, the Lester sisters. So Melissa, so Melissa doesn't have to worry about her sister timing her out for no good reason. Um, it didn't help that I didn't care much for Rose as an assistant, says Grant Crosby. She was, I guess she was, yeah, she was. Um, an assistant during the David Tennant era. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like Rose either. Um, you know, I just, um, I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I usually like cute assistants, but Rose was just, I didn't hate her. Like I have some assistants, I, but she just didn't, she didn't, uh, I didn't, find her that likable i think part of it may, may have been that that she was hooked up with mickey who was an idiot and i didn't like see i don't know and i didn't really like the whole romance thing between her and the doctor i i thought that was weird i wasn't a fan of that either i, I like the doctor being separated platonic with his assistants i don't i don't want to see or i don't like suggestions of like hanky panky between them and i think that's why i like the uh the matt smith doctor because even though amy amy pond was hot super hot when she hit on him he was like he didn't it was almost like he didn't understand what was going on um there was I, I like the 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 strong sort of platonic brother sister thing between them and i, I like that among when i like that with doctor who i liked it with tom baker and uh and uh, uh sarah jane i liked it with tom baker and uh layla ward even though in real life they got married <laughs> at least on the show you know they were you know they were just colleagues and I, and, I, and I like that with doctor who I, I it's not I don't, I don't want i don't want doctor who to be like a romance show and it shouldn't be <laughs> hey melissa said yeah don't make doctor who weird yeah exactly <laughs> it, it sounds weird to say that but you know he, he he he's a character that that works 
much better as just like as the crazy uncle you know who's who's carting his uh his nieces and nephews around the universe in time and space so <laughs> Grant Crosby says, I like Martha, but I have to admit, I have a limited view, having only seen a few of them. Yeah, I like Martha Jones, too. Um, and, I, and, I, and I did like that she and Mickey ended up together because, um, I guess, in the future, Mickey stops being an idiot. He stops being stupid and goofy, and, he's, and, he, and he, like, sort of matures out. And then I like that Mickey. Yeah, the Mickey that sort of was more serious, and then he hooks up with Martha Jones. I thought that was good, so... Am I? Mm, all right. What time is it? It's two o'clock now. Um, I am going to. I apologize. I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to get up and get some to drink and. Uh, stretch my legs for a second. I'll be back shortly. So don't leave, please. I'm not I'm not abandoning you. I'm just uh I just need to sort of take a short respite and uh try to recharge before I try to finish this thing off. Mm, it's getting there. It's getting there. I think I'm 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 pretty close, I think. <laughs> but I just need to need to step away for from it for a few minutes. Try to get some uh perspective on it. Just a little. Just a little bit. Grant Crosby says bio break. Hmm. Grant Crosby says I actually didn't didn't dislike Mickey. Yeah, if again, it was just what I. I didn't dislike him so much as I did as I disliked his behavior, and then he straightened out in the end, and then I liked him. So, um, Joseph dresses. I like Leela. Yeah, I love Leela. I thought Leela was an awesome. Loved her. I thought she was such a cool character. I I, I um. I, I I liked her, the fact that she was sort of like a a, a, a barbarian, and, and her 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 initial reaction to things was kill it, you know. And the doctor was constantly saying no, don't. But she wasn't stupid. That was the thing. I, I liked the fact that she was sort of primal, but she wasn't an idiot. She wasn't dumb. She wasn't ignorant, you know. She, she and she was eager to learn. I liked all the the whole character. I thought was really well done. I, w I wish they they had brought her back in some of the later. Did they? I can't remember if they ever brought her back in one of the later, um, like movies or specials or whatever. Um, I, I I wish they had, I, but I can't remember if they did. Anywho, I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, shortly, you, Melissa. Yeah, I'll see you shortly. I'll see you shortly. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm back. Apparently, something happened, and the uh, computer went a little schizo. So, sorry about that. But, uh, let me see here. Eight people are still here. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Um, see, Amy Lester is here. And uh, everybody's saying, welcome back. Thank you very much. I just have my new favorite drink. If you haven't tried this, you should try it. It's seltzer water with country time lemonade poured into it. <laughs> it's like a carbonated lemonade. It's very good. Um, so, and, and actually, I, what I use is I use uh, like flavored seltzer water. So it's like cherry flavored seltzer water with country time lemonade it's like hmm. it surprisingly tastes very good 
So I've been drinking that for the last couple of weeks. So I might be addicted. I don't know. We'll see. Um, all right, that's, that's good. Let's check the air conditioner, make sure it was still working because it is hot. Ah. Um, Melissa says, hello, Jiminy. Fizzy lemonade does sound refreshing. It is. It's very good. Um, Country time is sweet. Seltzer isn't. They balance out. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It's not It's not too sweet. And it's, uh, there's something about the, the fizzy that makes it crisp and especially good good when you drink it in a cold glass so i'll put a glass in your refrigerator and it'll be cold and then i'll pour the salsa water in you have to be careful though because when you put the country time mix in if you put it in all at once the seltzer sort of explodes like a you know like vinegar and baking soda <laughs> So you have to put it in like a little at a time and then it won't like overflow the glass and get, you know, make like a huge like lemonade puddle on your countertop. So be careful. Not for children. Ice Queen says, I have no idea what any of that is, but British lemonade is fizzy. Really? Oh, okay. Well, you, you know what seltzer water is. So country time, Le country time lemonade is just like a, it's just a lemonade powder mix. They you, they you put it into water and then you mix it and then it's you have lemonade. So you basically just take seltzer water, the lemonade mix, mix them together. I had no idea that uh, British lemonade was uh, was carbonated though, like Mentos and Coke. Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> Maybe not as explosive, but uh, yeah, similar. So, so try it out if you uh, if you if you dare. Uh oh, ooh ooh ooh, hold on. Rat. I got all excited. I thought it was, I thought it was the uh, the Amazon man, but it wasn't. It was my uh, the president of my condo association. My, not nearly as, as as exciting as as the as the uh, Amazon guy. So I was disappointed. Um, yeah, I'm waiting for a new hard drive for my computer because, like I said before. My computer died last week. I just got it up and running again. And so um, I need a new hard drive to back up my data. And so I bought yesterday, I bought a uh, four terabyte internal hard drive to hold me over until uh, probably, I'm, I'm probably gonna wait until Black Friday and hopefully I'll, there'll be some deals and I'll be able to get a cloud account so I can back up my uh, my data online as well. So I've been I've been kind of, I've been kind of lax about backing things up and then and then my computer dying about a week and a half ago sort of slapped me in the face and made me realize that I'm like this close to like 
I'm losing everything if I don't uh, if I don't take uh, you know precautions to protect against it. So you got to do it. Um, you know what's oh oh okay I I'm sorry Ice Queen I I thought you knew what seltzer water water is it, yes yeah, carbonated water you know it's like you go to you go to the uh, go to the pub and, um you, you know they you know they'll have you know carbonated water for you that's what seltzer water is um Melissa says I had a Capri Sun with seltzer water ooh huh interesting very nice as I recall. How do you get the Capri Sun into the self? So you'd have to, I guess you have to cut the top off. Huh, interesting. Uh, I mean, for me, Capri Sun, the, the whole fun of Capri Sun is like pu putting that straw in. And then, you know, it's, uh, the drink itself is kind of kind of nasty and lame. But, you know, the fact that it's in like a an astronaut pa pouch that you poke a straw through, that's, that's what makes Capri Sun worth getting. <laughs> Okay, they just call it, uh, they just call it fizzy water. Okay, Car or carbonated. Okay, gotcha. Okay. I think you can get it in powder form. What? Um, Capri Sun? Now I want to try Tang with seltzer water. Ugh. Ugh. I don't know about that. I never like Tang. Uh, tang is, ugh. Ugh. No. Ugh, no. Ugh. Hmm. I remember having Tang. My my next door neighbor, when we lived in New York when I was a kid, um, they drank Tang, and I had it once. I was like, nope. It's I'm not, I'm not into like fake orange juice. So I just <laughs> powdered orange juice. I couldn't I couldn't do it. Brad Crosby says, but Tang is the breakfast of the astronauts. <laughs> Only because they couldn't get anything better. Hmm. 
The paper straws don't work as well as the old plastic ones. I just end up bending them and getting frustrated. Yeah, I hate paper straws. They're useless. They get soggy and it's like, ugh, disgusting. I love plastic straws. I don't care if the earth dies a fiery death as a result of me using plastic straws. I want to use plastic straws. That's, I mean, I want, I want things that work, not things that are simply put into, put into use because, uh, you know, people are stupid. <laughs> I want my plastic straws, preferably twisty straws. Amy wisely points out that you can recycle plastic straws. Paper straws go in the dimp. <laughs> they go straight in the dimp. <laughs> Amy asked herself, what, do you, what even is a dim? I guess it's a dump for plastic straws. Exactly. Toss it in the dim. Just address says paper straws just end up in the paper waste and the plastic straws can be recycled. Yeah. I mean, they both can be recycled. You just toss paper straws in the paper recycling bin, toss plastic straws in the plastic recycling bin, they recycle them, and then you make new paper and plastic straws. Bing, bomb, boom.
think of fire in connection with emotion. Because when it becomes stirred up, I mean, our emotions control your actions. It affects not only yourself, but the people around you. Psychologists find that control of emotion can be gained by understanding the stimulus response pattern. When you have certain experiences, you respond with various emotions, stimulus response. Just as this sort of stimulus produces this sort of involuntary response. Let me see here. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. More plastic surgery. Did 
didn't pay enough attention to proportions when I was drawing this earlier. Excuse me. Thank you. 
Hey, Carrie, how you doing? Are we doing well? Tomorrow's opportunity. 
Ah, uh, I wrote this. I'm two two hours behind in the stream. How is everyone? I am tired. <laughs> um, fortunately, I've been up since uh, three o'clock this morning, so I'm I'm worn out a little, unfortunately. Um, so probably gonna draw for another eh, twenty minutes or so, and then and call a wrap. Um, try to finish this off stream um, and uh, and get it done. Carrie says your drawing is really good. Thank you, Carrie. Appreciate that. Glad you like it. I like people with interesting faces, and Jim Caviezel has an interesting face.
Um, let's see, uh, Amy says, so did you decide to draw instead of go to bed because drawing makes you sleepy, or are you just finally hitting the wall 3 a.m., post 3 a.m. wall? Yeah, I'm just hitting the, the 3 a.m. wall. It's, I mean, it's almost 12 hours since I got up. I mean, I went to, I went to bed. I was really tired around 10 o'clock last night. Went to bed, woke up at three, got up, started doing stuff, and knew I knew I wanted to do a drawing stream because I haven't done one in a long time, and so do one during the daytime when people were actually up, <laughs> and uh, so figured I'll start at noon, and then hopefully I'll get done in two or three hours, and by that time I can. I can take a nap, so I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that nap time. <laughs> My body is telling me it's time to uh, time to shut down for a little while. So, of course, my wife's gonna wake me up when she gets home. But you know, at least I'll get a I'll get a couple hours rest before she gets home. I wish I could nap, says Jay Ryan. Jay Ryan, don't you work at home? I thought you did. Maybe you uh, maybe you have a day job. I don't know. In which case, I advise you not to nap. If you have a <laughs> if you have a job you have to go to outside of the home, don't nap. Employers tend not, tend to frown on that. I found. But if you work at home, I I encourage people to nap. What do you got there, 
I have to actually sleep. If I sleep less than four hours straight, I feel gross. So I sleep, just sleep for uh, four to six hours a day. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I, I mean, I usually sleep about six hours a day, but I like to nap because that that recharges me. So if I if I nap for I say nap, I mean less than four hours. If I nap for like two hours, then I'm then I'm good for I'm good for another eight hours. <laughs> so I, I tend to my my sleep is not like one block a day. I'll sleep for four hours, then I'll work, then I'll take a like hour and a half nap, then I'll get up again. And work, and then I'll and I'll finally go to sleep for six hours, and I'll get up and work for twelve hours. I'm I'm like all over the place, so you know there's no there's no set schedule where ten thirty every night I go to bed. I'm usually up all night, and then I'll go to bed. My usual schedule is is I'm I'm up all night. I'll go to bed around five or six when the sun comes up. And then I'll sleep till noon or one. You know, I'll sleep for like six hours. And then I'll get up and then I'll work until, again, you know, six. And then I'll take enough, you know, I'll go to bed again. So. so no napping on the job for Jay Ryan, Amy. Amy says three o'clock is a good time for a siesta. I I agree. I can't nap for an hour. It really messes me up. Really, huh? I'm kind of the opposite. I love to nap. I love napping. Napping is one of the great pleasures of life. I loved it as a kid when we had nap time during kindergarten. I love it as an adult. I especially love napping on Sundays, Sunday afternoons after church. I come home. My wife will make bacon for me. I'll take a nap while she's making bacon. So I wake up, the bacon, bacon and eggs will be ready. That's the best. <laughs> I'll wake up to the smell of bacon. It's like, mmm, bacon. But no, naps are awesome. Napping is fun Fred Crosby says, uh, any napping, sleeping during the day seriously messes me up. I won't be able to get to sleep until the next morning. Interesting. Yeah, I never had trouble falling asleep. I, uh, I'm, that's, my wife hates me because of that. Uh, she, <laughs> she has trouble going to sleep a lot. And I am just like, as soon as I close my eyes, I am out. It doesn't matter what time of day or night it is, where I am. I fall asleep at football, football games. I fall asleep pretty much anywhere. 
doesn't matter to me. My body, my body t- tells me when it's time to sleep, and then it just like it's like a light just like goes off, and I'm just like I'm I'm done. I'm out, and then I wake up, you know, whenever again. My body tells me it's time to get up. So it's weird though because if I have to get up at a certain time, like if I if I have to be somewhere at like. I don't know. In four hours, it's like I can. I mean, I'll set my alarm clock, but in a sense, I can sort of. My internal clock tells me when it's time to wake up, so I don't have to. I don't. I generally don't worry about oversleeping. Um, you know, if I have to be somewhere, I my my body just says, you know, uh oh, it's time to wake up, and. I'll wake up and I'll look at the clock and it's like, it'll be like five minutes before my alarm goes off. It's like, dang it. (laughs) I missed five minutes sleep. (laughs) My internal clock's too good. Jay Ryan says, I have no trouble sleeping at all. I hit the pi- hit, hit, head, hit, head hits the pillow and I'm out. But yeah, if I try to lay down midday for an hour or two, it just screws everything up. I almost feel nauseous. So I just sleep my four to six hours a day and that's it. Okay, that's cool. Everybody is different. We're all different. Um, Grant Crosby says, often I end up laying awake for a few hours until boredom drives me back up. Hmm. I will do that if I've slept too much. If, if I sleep too much um, and I wake up, but it's the middle of the night, I'll try to fall back to sleep. When I say sleep too much, I mean like over eight hours. If I, if I, if I sleep over eight hours, I get a headache. Um, and a lot of times if, if I sleep much longer than six hours, I'll get a headache. So like six hours is like optimal for me. I can get by with four hours sleep and still function, but less than four hours, I'm kind of a mess. More than I'll say seven hours, I get a headache. So I have to like, again, like six hours for me is ideal, you know? I can fall asleep, wake up, I feel good, I don't have a headache, you know, my, my, my brain is generally active and able to function, so... The odd time I get eight hours, says Jay Ryan. Yeah, I mean, I'll I can sleep at eight hours, but the only time I, I sleep like longer than eight hours is if I've been like pulling like you know two all nighters in a row. If I've been slept in like thirty six hours, then I'll, or or longer, I'll I'll go to bed and I'll I'll just I'll black out for ten hours, ten to twelve hours, and. Uh, <laughs> And then I'll then I'll get back up. Amy Lester says you're a sleeping machine. Yeah, I mean I I I, I enjoy sleep. It's it's it's, it's just, for me it's very it's it's I don't know there's something about it. I I I enjoy the peace of it. I like my bed. I like my pillow. I like the fact that my brain shuts off. It doesn't shut off. I mean, I'm dreaming and stuff, but in terms of like all of my, all the stress of the day disappears when I'm sleeping and I, and, and my brain can just be at ease. I don't have to worry about anything. And so it's, it's like, it's, it's such, it's such a break for me that I, I, a lot of times I, I look forward to, to going to bed. I'm just like, oh, 
finally I can just like and just rest and just let everything go. So at least it was only five minutes before the alarm, not forty-five minutes. Yeah, if it's forty-five minutes, I'll, I'll go back. To, I can go back to sleep. If it's five minutes, then I'm just like, ah, yeah, you know, I'm like, I'll, I'll still lay in bed, but I'm not. I'm in no rush to. Uh, <laughs> I'm in no rush to get up. What I will do is I'll, I'll turn down the alarm so it's not as blaring. So. Yeah, this is coming together pretty well. And I, and I think, uh, I'm not sure who said it. It may have been Amy. That, um, yeah, once I put the stubble in, or maybe it was Ice Queen. Once I put the stubble in, it's it's pulling together better. So I think I'm so used to seeing him with stubble that without it, he doesn't, he looks, uh, he looks bald. <laughs> kind of looks he kind of looks like a bald baby without without facial hair so of some sort Okay. I think this is uh, it's almost done. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll 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 keep tweaking it and try to tighten it up a little, but for for the most part, I think this is pretty much finished. I apologize for ending it so soon, but I, I kind of have to lie down, so. Uh, but this is my attempt at drawing Mr. Jim Caviezel. This looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Like I said, I'll tighten it up and then uh, see how much better I can make it look, so. But uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. I appreciate it. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel if you would. I'll have more content coming up. Like I said, I'm going to have uh, some reviews for some comics this weekend or maybe Monday. And uh, I'll be doing more drawing streams in the, you know, in the coming uh, days and weeks. So please make sure to subscribe, 
hit the bell for notifications of future video make sure that the notification bell is set for all videos and uh please make sure to hit the like button uh for this live stream and uh if you would uh, that will definitely help the algorithm and youtube to uh sort of uh promote my channel and my videos It'd be a big help to me and it's free completely free won't cost you as much as a thin dime so if you would hit that like button okay um hey margo's here hey margo good seeing you thanks for thanks for coming back it's great seeing you um and he says get sleep now yes i will and uh everybody you take care i'll talk to you later all right stay out of trouble thanks for watching again it's good seeing all you guys and i uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the day okay take care bye